Are you feeling stressed? Yes. Yes, with all this information, right? But are we pumped up? Estamos listos para la lucha. Claro que sí, ¿verdad? Tienen que estar con mucha energía porque ¿quién creen que sigue ahora? Ya miraron el arte que está aquí enfrente. Aquí fue hecho y hay unas piezas acá atrás también hechas por estudiantes de la escuela de la Watsonville High School. Ahora les voy a presentar. Now I'm switching over and we are going to introduce our Watsonville High School students. Wow. This is very a special moment. This is really the highlight of the event because you're going to hear from three wonderful Watsonville High School students. They're in their lunch break right now. Right? They're, so let's give them another round of applause. They're missing lunch to be here, to be part of this uh, news conference, to give their testimony. And more importantly, they're here because they're surrounded by so many legends. Let's give all of you a big round of applause. Y los que están allá, que no se quisieron acercar también, un aplauso para ustedes, de verdad. Our future looks wonderful because we have leaders like many of you here that you see that are teaching the next generation of leaders. So I want to introduce Rocío Ortiz, Jessica Gonzalez and Ana Rivera, they are students, again, from the Watsonville High School, but they sometimes work in the fields. They're also farm workers. And they are the founding members of the Safe Act Safe Schools Future Leaders of Change for the city of Watsonville. Yes! <laughs> They are responsible for many of these powerful signs, like I mentioned, this amazing artwork is all due to them. And so friends, let's give them a heart warm welcome to Rocio, Jessica, and Ana. Buenas tardes a todos, muchas gracias por estar aquí para escuchar nuestro testimonio y lo que vivimos nosotros. Mi nombre es Rocío Ortiz, voy, voy a la preparatoria Watson High. Tengo dos años trabajando en los files de fresa, pero eso no se compara a nada a los 20 años que mis padres trabajaron en los files, sembrando y cosechando. Hoy me presento aquí frente a todos ustedes para lograr hacer un cambio. Tiene que parar la, ya la injusticia que miles de campesinos viven día con día, el racismo que crean las mismas personas que según están aquí para ayudarnos. Nosotros no deberíamos de estar aquí. Este problema que estamos enfrentando se pudo haber resuelto desde la primera vez que se mencionó. ¿Cómo es posible que pongan la salud de miles de personas en riesgo todos los días cuando salen a cortar verduras y frutas para alimentar a miles de personas? Otros jóvenes de mi edad que viven más lejos de los files no tienen que pasar por esto. Es una injusticia lo que está pasando con las comunidades de bajos ingresos y los trabajadores agrícolas. No es justo que tengamos que estar aquí peleando porque no implementan esas reglas para preparar los, para parar los pesticidas que ponen en riesgo la salud de muchos, no solo los trabajadores sino también a los consumidores. La salud de miles de personas no es un juego para mí y es por eso que estoy aquí. He, he escrito un poema que habla de mi experiencia que tristemente le ha pasado a muchos más. Mi poema se titula Ponte en mi lugar. Cinco de la madrugada, cubriendo toda mi cara, para evitar respirar el olor de la mañana. Ronchas en la piel, pensando que fueron las espinas que causaron mis heridas. Pensando que fue el sol que mi dolor de cabeza causó. La batalla de mi inocencia, evitándome ver la realidad. 
cuando veo por detrás el tractor esprayando la realidad. El olor a azufre que quema mis ojos. El olor a azufre que causó mi dolor de cabeza. Veo por detrás el letrero en inglés. Keep out. Danger. Ellos sin entender. Se metían a cortar para llenar. En ese momento me pregunté. ¿Por qué no era en español en lugar de inglés? Ponte en mi lugar. ¿No harías lo mismo para luchar? Queremos un cambio ahora y no mañana. Muchas gracias. Hello, my name is Jessie Dillon Santos. I'm a senior at Watsonville High School and I'm a member of SAS. I come from an indigenous family from Oaxaca, Mexico. My parents migrated here in 2000 and started working in the fields in 2010. When I started working in the fields, I noticed injustice. One of them being pesticide, and I say injustice because I would regularly see a truck that carried pesticides, not far from, not far from us, like 20 feet away. They would spray these pesticides in the morning and have us work close to these sprayed fields. This pesticide smelled like metallic, um, it smelled like oily metallic, which was very strong and nasty. I was exposed to them at a very young age when my parents would come home with their dirty clothes that carry those pesticides. Farm workers provide you with your food, so why aren't you taking care of them? It's not just them, but also consumers. People buying food that carries those pesticides are getting sick. There's been so much research of how these pesticides affect people's health, some of them being short-term effects like rashes, stinging eyes, and dizziness, to long-term chronic effects like cancer, reproductive harm, and birth defects. People are getting sick. Why isn't DPR listening to its people? The Department of Pesticide Regulation should be prioritizing public health rather than profits. This is what we call environmental racism. People who are more exposed to pesticides are people of color and low-income low communities. Many people have been fighting for these pesticide regulations for many years. We have been asking for change. If you can create it, we will. Thank you. Good afternoon, my name is Anaid Rivera Espinosa from Watsonville High School. Woo, I'm present here to give my testimony on pesticides. At the age of 12, I started working in the fields. One memory I recall, it was early in the morning around 11, when I noticed a big tractor spraying white powder over the fields. I didn't really mind it that much, because at that time I was not informed of the cost that it would do to my health. The block that was being spread was the opposite block where my quadrilla was working on. Later that day, we moved into the block that was just red. I didn't know that much at that time. But then later around 2 p.m., I, we got our break. And it, that's our last break. My eyes, while I sat down to eat, my eyes started to burn and get watery. I didn't know. I was wondering why. But then later that day, I went home and I asked my mom and then mentioned it to her. She asked me, were there any tractors bringing something around the bushes, around the block? I, to which I respond, yes. And she asked, did you notice any man in, in a uniform, in a white uniform? And I said, yes. She said, she mentioned to me, it was due to the pesticide that was just spread early in that morning. That is when I started to wonder, are there any safer alternative for pesticides? Yeah. Why harm those that provide for us? Yes. They gave us food on, on our table, like our daughters, sons, parents, sisters, brothers, etc. This is wrong. Pesticide is wrong. No one should be putting their health at risk for your own resources, for your sources. Say no to pesticide. Thank you.